Chad Buffett. You're listening to the Movie Raid Show. It's time for the Movie Raid. Tonight's victim is special effects artist Chad Buffett that has done such films like Drawn Like Moths and Friday 13 Vengeance, uh, as well as many others. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Mike? So tell me about uh, Drawn Like Moths, actually. Tell me about more about that. So that's a sci-fi movie. It's an independent fan film that's filmed out in Seattle. It'll be coming out later this year, I believe, towards uh, October, November time frame, when they finish uh, shooting the rest of it. Not much I can say about it, obviously. Looks pretty interesting stuff from what I've seen. Uh, how much have you done on it so far, or have you... Are you about to fly in and, and do this a couple of weeks, months, or is this still up in the air? I'm done with the majority of it now. We created the creature effects for it, the prosthetics. We also did some props and also created a, a vehicle for them, a law enforcement vehicle for it. So it's pretty much done. There's a little bit more to go for their end scenes, but that one's pretty much wrapped up on, on our side. Now, having you involved within this project as well as Friday 13 Vengeance, is this because you were local and then they just happened to spot you, or did you actually were you actually interested and you said, hey, if you need somebody, in so-and-so? <laughs> I know a lot of people that are into everything from special effects to props to costumes, and, you know, it's one of those things through the grapevine. People know about me. Tell a lot of my work has come through is just through the grapevine. Um, I've never been big on advertising stuff, so when they come by with the project and if it looks like something interesting, then you know I'll do it. I'm a big sci-fi and horror buff fan. Just about anything horror or sci-fi I'll do. Very nice. And, and w let's say if work doesn't, like, just keep coming through the door would you rather be catering toward more of the the cosplay community in terms of being up for hire for that and instead rather and waiting on the work no i'm more of a diversified i kind of spread out all over one of my goals is to have a large special effect prop studio in the seattle area you've got them in vancouver and toronto and georgia and california and seattle has a lot of artists and it's kind of bugged me that there isn't a special effects studio. So my goal is to just keep growing every year and then just add on more projects. Um, this, this is definitely a busy year. Can you rent a studio or do you have to actually physically buy one? Right now I have a space. I will be leasing a larger space later this summer because I'm already out of space. So I'll be searching for something. Does that put more of a strenuous strain on you uh, in terms of your work uh, as having to deal with that and, and the work? I mean, you have to like manage money-wise and uh, trying to get more work or are you pretty much got this set up here? No, it's, it's, it can be stressful. I mean, it's managing. I do have a full-time artist that works for me um, and a, a bunch of people part-time that help out for specific projects but when it comes to ordering supplies and bills and all that it's you know it's on me so it does take a bit of time and you know it can be stressful but it's, it's fun i enjoy it have you ever actually maybe part-time hire some people to help you out with that or are you just basically sticking with that right now i'm planning on hiring somebody part-time maybe full-time later this year to kind of i guess you'd call them a shop assistant you know help out with some of that other stuff to take the burden off me because when you are doing any of this creative stuff whether it's sculpting or 3d modeling or anything like that obviously life's distractions make it hard to kind of get in that creative process so i try to insulate myself as much as possible and separate those otherwise i'll be sitting there the whole time i'm sculpting something or making something i'll be thinking oh, oh you know i gotta pay the water bill or oh i gotta pay the you know, food bill or whatever have you gotten to the point where you can actually make your own like starting fund like example like with kickstarter or something like that I I have. I'm not big on having other people kind of fund on this because I want it to be its own independent studio. So I pretty much take any of the money that I make any, and I invest it back in. So that way it's pretty self-sufficient without having you know outside sources for cash flow. Oh, so you pretty much want to invest everything purely into this yourself. I mean, have you ever thought about going to like smaller venue revenues to generate a little bit of cash from from like maybe other companies, maybe or any other revenues just to put in for the just to for the lease itself? Yeah, there's. A, I am looking at a couple options for that this year. I do have a lot. There's a lot of oddball stuff that I do for different sources of income to help grow this. But there's a couple things I'm I'm kind of working on this year to to spark that a little bit better, so that way it'll fund the warehouse space or a flex space for doing all the work so when it comes to your work when you work becomes a product eventually do you focus where it'll head next or would you rather be more accessible to other companies themselves i do iterations when i'm for example when i'm doing props because those are things that are more um, long-term 
and more close up. I do a lot of iterations on those, two, three, four times until I get exactly what I want. Um, once I get what I want, then I just work work on making it more efficient so other people can come in that don't have as much experience and can make some extra cash in the summer, you know, casting parts or putting things together, which I do that a lot. I have part-time people come through all the time, you know, that'll come in for an hour, two hours, eight hours, you know, to work on stuff that I've created that I make so it's easier for them to build the thing. So they learn how to do a new, do something. They learn a new skill, a new task. And then they're also helping me by creating the stuff so I can get more things out there to kind of grow the business. But having to work with people who isn't really that experienced, I mean, having to, that's, isn't that the, another add on to all the other stuff you got to, to work with? I mean, that's kind of like reteaching someone like one simple basic thing, right? <laughs> yeah, in the beginning, I would take, you know, basically, you let anybody come in and I teach them. But last year, I got away from that. And now I only bring in people that are artists, whether they're sculptors or costume designers or prop makers because they understand it more and there's a lot less of that learning curve for them to come in to actually work on parts. Yeah, and it's definitely a lot more, uh, I guess, more at ease and more comfortable in your area because when they, if, if it's, let's say they are a painter and they, and they are a sculptor or, or anything in within the medium that you're wanting, you, you know, they, yeah, they can form it into something else. They don't have to actually be catered to the, specifically what you do exactly, but you can turn it into something else to where you can form it to what they have and to make it a, a different vision. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, like the guy, one of the guys that I have that works full time, he's actually a sculptor. And he does a lot of sculpting in clay, and I had him do the sculpt work for the drawn like mom prosthetics they needed for that film. But people that have different skills, you know, all tap their skills. Like I have a lady that's a seamstress. You know, she helps with anything that involves sewing or any costume design for any costumes that that I'm working on. Yeah, that's definitely more beneficial for everybody. I mean, I know that it would help help out the artist or anyone that's helping you out because maybe they'll get recognition from working with your production, even if it is a let's say it's a small time. Or, small, or even if it's just pure local, someone's eventually going to take notice and maybe they'll might hire you an actual crew, you know, like a bigger crew, and then you know, things can probably kick off from there. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now, I, I enjoy teaching the people that are here and I, they get credit for the work they do. If it's film work, you know, they get it, you know, they'll get their IMDb and street cred, you know, they'll get something because they've worked on it. When it comes to, let's say, buying pieces of, of a sculpt, and I don't mean like an existing design piece, let's, let's say from a movie prop or something. I mean like just, just an existing design piece and then you buy that design piece and then you, you know, want to do something else with it. I mean, do you think it's more natural just to make your own stuff rather than having to buy stuff on the internet? I'm not a big fan of buying things on the internet like that. You know, I will make it myself. I'll design it myself, whether it's a 3D model that's 3D printed or whether it's clay or, you know, foam or some other media. I like to design it myself. A lot of times the things you buy on the internet, I mean, they're great, you know, for, you know, individual needs, whether it's cosplay, you know, somebody needs a gun or sword. Then again, you know, you are getting what you pay for. But there's a lot of people out there that are pretty demanding in the prop cosplay and sci-fi world that want things that are better quality, that last a lot longer. They want to be that special person. They want to be the, oh, well, I've got this, and you don't have that kind of thing. Um, not like it's a bad thing, but you know, they want to stand out. Do you think it's kind of rare to get that? I mean, the, the cosplay, I mean, it's such a huge thing. I mean, like you said, everyone's looking for a specific thing for the costume or the mask or something, but they either can't afford it or they don't have any experience in making their own. I mean, do you think it's kind of lacking the fact that these guys aren't getting help? I mean, I'm sure they would hire someone but within the, you know, the price range, but you think that's really hard to get? I think it is hard to get. There are a lot of people out there that are you know, kind of tight-lipped and hold their knowledge on how to do things. I have people today that were pinging me on uh, Instagram. They ask, you know, hey, your thing looks awesome. You know, how do you do it? I'll tell them exactly how to do it, how to do a budget, but a nice version of it, because it's just, you know, more people out there entertaining people and making people happy and smile. Uh, there's a lot of people out there in the community that'll be like, oh, I'm going to hold on to this tightly. I don't want people to know about it because this is my revenue generator for this thing, or you know, this is my secret thing. So I'm not one to hold that. I'm I mean, people in the community know if they need something or they want to know something, they can either come over to my shop, use the tools, I'll show them how to do it, you know, I'll teach them anything they need to. I'm never one of those people that's going to withhold information on how to build your own prop just so you can, you know, buy something from me or buy something from somebody else because it's more expensive. Yeah, but I mean, also trust is really, uh, really, really hard now these days. I mean, especially when it comes to your work, when it comes to making the props or anything in general that isn't really up for sale, you're just making it and maybe, you know, it might be used for something else, but I mean, if you are inviting everybody to come down to your shop, do you keep yourself protected from that as well? Oh, yeah. 
I used to be in law enforcement years ago, so I'm not worried about protecting myself or my family or anything like that. I got that taken care of. But no, the people that come in, I don't just let anybody come in. I, you know, I, I vet them and, you know, we'll go have coffee or lunch and I'll talk to them. Or maybe some VI already you knows through somebody else. Ask them, I'll be like, hey, tell me about this person. You know, are they a serial killer? You know, do they rob banks? You know, whatever. So I haven't had an issue yet with anybody coming in that's caused them you know, problems. People, they just want to, they want to come in and make something cool and they want to learn how to do it. You think that's also rare as well? I mean, like, people don't get that kind of opportunity to just go into what to them would be you know an expensive looking shop but to you it's a low budget shop you haven't even even upgraded yet but i mean to them it's a new experience it's a new world and they they're ready to go they're ready to do this but do you think it's it's hard for anyone to actually learn without having to pay you know 300 500 thousand dollars for classes and all that you know when i teach people and they come in here and i teach them new, t- new skills it's, it's all hands-on it's like you know i'll show them how to make it you know i get people that come in and say things like, oh, I've always wanted to make X, Y, Z, but, you know, I didn't have the time, didn't have the money, whatever it is. You know, and I tell them those are all excuses. It's like, you don't need a lot of money to do this stuff. You know, you can start with the first iteration of something, whether it's armor or gun, prop gun or sword. You don't need a lot of money. You can go to the Value Village, Goodwill, pick up some supplies for that. You can use foam, stuff at Home Depot. It's just, you got to sit down and start doing it. And once you start sitting down and you carve something or cut something and start making something, a creative process start, then you know, it starts to come together and the people start to feel that. They're like, hey, oh crap, look, I made this thing. It's so awesome. And then they kind of get hooked. They kind of get hooked. Like, it's almost like a drug. Oh, definitely. Because uh, don't you have your own little store as well that you actually make, you know, movie replica props and stuff like that? I do. I do. I, there's a limited number of things that I sell on the internet. The majority of the stuff comes through commissions or projects. But I, I did a few years ago open up storefronts. That way people can buy things and get, get things that they're interested in. But a lot of times if there's things that I don't have on the internet if people send me an email or message me I'll tell them if I have it and I'll, I'll make them something yeah when it comes to your work though like in this profession do you use yourself a- as the actual instrument of inspiration or do you, you know, to the creation or other uh, different ways to, to make that creation it depends if it's something where I'm just really replicating something um, it's more of a collecting data you know, looking at pictures, looking at screen captures, things like that, analyzing, you know, the measurements to get an exact an exact copy of something. But if it's something that's custom, you know, like John with Moz, there's custom stuff that's in there that hasn't been out before. It's not something that was drawn from, you know, oh, this is something from this movie or this thing. It's something that's based on a lot of little pieces of things all over that are brought together as one. So it's, you know, it's, it's custom, so it's kind of creative. Nice, nice. Go ahead and plug in any website any release dates that of other projects you got going any anything that you would like to promote in general as well like Friday 13 Vengeance as well as Drawn Like Moths yeah definitely I'm, you know the Friday 13th and the Drawn Like Moths are, they're actually turning out to be pretty pretty good looking movies uh, a lot of work as you know from the interviews and stuff Friday 13 Vengeance has has got a lot of people that are helping out with that. Um, and Drawn Like Moz will be definitely interesting. It's kind of a different take on some uh, standard sci-fi films that are out there. Website-wise, you know, if you ever want to ask me any questions, whether it's how to do XYZ, go to raptorprops.com, or you can email me at chat at raptorprops.com, and I'm always happy to answer questions. There you have it, everybody. Special effects artist Chad Muppet.